live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Q covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and John Walls. And welcome back here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage of VMworld in Las Vegas for the Mandalay Bay uh, Resort. So, you know, great going on here for the second of three days that we're going to be here uh, bringing you coverage here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this week. Along with Stu Miniman, I'm John Walls. We're joined now by Mike Field, who is the interim CTO of Bay State Health. Uh, Mike, thanks for being with us here on theCUBE. We appreciate your time. My pleasure, my and pleasure. Let's set the table here about Bay State, uh, Western Massachusetts based Correct. healthcare provider. Yes. But a lot of hats you're wearing as the interim CTO teaching hospital, community hospital. Uh, home care, uh, hospice care, uh, 12,000 folks working in your organization, all medical of associates. How are you juggling all that today in the IT world? Uh, difficultly, but actually, it's, it's actually not that bad. It's, it's a pretty straightforward job. Um, uh, love it. Uh, it's just new stuff all the time. I'm learning all the time. I'm working. It's just, I'm having a great time. We, we've talked a lot this week and heard a lot this week about the digital transformation, how very real that is, and mm -hmm. moving on to the digital economy, if you will. Very important in your space, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of patient care, patient information, patient data. Um, from a 30,000 foot level, what concerns do you have in terms of that uh, record protection and then that information's being sent about various diagnoses uh, that you have to be concerned about? Sure. Well, first of all, we have to maintain uptime. I mean, the end, at the end of the day, our doctors, our clinical staff have to have access to all the tools, all the systems, all the time. So we simply have to have everything operational all the time. And uh, in today's budgetary constraints, like our institution, like many others, is going through a lot of budgetary issues. So uh, that's the main, that, what keeps me up, other than security, which is a whole other issue, uh, is how do I maintain the quality of our IT, which is the foundation of much of the systems that patients rely on. Um, that's it, that's, that's one of my major focuses. Yeah, Mike, can you sketch out for us just kind of the, the scope of the responsibility that you have, how sure. many locations, sure. number of kind sure. of patients or employees, however you measure that? Sure, As a, we're, we're about 12,000 employees. Mm -hmm. um, we handle well over a million uh, uh, patients in, a, in our area. We're, um, uh, you know, about three, really four hospitals. Uh, we have uh, an insurance company. We have a reference laboratory. We have a life sciences. We're a vertically integrated health system, uh, teaching hospital, as you mentioned. Um, my responsibilities are to help chart the uh, technology direction of the institution as a whole with certain specific mandates. One, I have to increase uh, uptime. I have to increase efficiency. I have to work within uh, essentially declining budgets. Um, I have to integrate new technologies, all of the above. All right, so talk to us a little bit about what you've been doing the last couple of years from a technology sure. standpoint. Uh, I think most of our audience will you know, hear what you said about the challenges and it's like, yeah, sure. that, that's it. Declining budgets, flat to down on you know, sure. head count, um, more things coming in and you know, <laughs> some of them understand the governance and compliance things sure. that you also need to deal with. And uh, I live in Massachusetts, I hear all the things uh, going on in healthcare there. Sure. Well, technologically, I would say the centerpiece is hyperconvergence. Um, to us, uh, there really is no other way to um, control costs, increase performance, increase operations, everything. Um, and that's been the major focus at the most fundamental level of, of our infrastructure. We began uh, about two years ago uh, what we call Infrastructure 2.0 which was essentially the replacement of all of our traditional storage, compute, and networking elements, uh, all based on uh, VMware's NSX, ESX, and v VM, uh, vSAN products. Um, we're now actually in production, um, uh, and we've seen phenomenal results from this. All right, so Mike, tell us, what was that replacing, and this wasn't a project deployment you were trying to kind of sweep the floor? Well, actually, it's a good question. Um, you really can't, it, it's interesting, we, we come at this two ways. One way is to say that there's an event like you put in Cerner or Epic and that's a natural point where you can, as you say, sweep the floor. We didn't really have that uh, as a case. What we had was our normal budgets, which by the way, all of this work I'm mentioning was done within the existing budgets. We didn't really require new dollars for this. But what we had to do, knowing the new systems coming on, the new imaging platforms, all of these things, required uh, that we build our new platforms to take care of those things at current or less dollars. So we started uh, with initial deployment, very small, side by side. Our typical infrastructure looked like any other hospital. We had, for example, EMC storage arrays, IBM storage arrays. We had a mainframe. We had uh, uh, AIX equipment, Lin every 
a complete salad bar approach to IT, basically. And then we began um, uh, a active, active, active network, three separate sites, um, which, which combine storage, networking, and compute, and have been increasing that while decreasing the other stuff and migrating to it. It's an ongoing process. All right, so, seven. Go ahead, so, sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, so two years ago, Virtual SAN was a relatively young product Correct. compared to where it is today. It's right. had a huge growth, especially the last 12 right. months. So what led you to that? And, you know, I hate to say it, it sounds a little risky, you know, going out yes. to, you know, I mean, VMware's trusted. It sounds like you've used them for a while. But, you know, why were you willing to be kind of an early adopter of that technology? Well, if you want to make a significant change, you're going to have to take some risks. And typically, uh, healthcare is, is somewhat risk averse, but Base State is kind of blessed. Our CIO, a gentleman named Joel Venko, is, uh, is very forward looking um, and realized that to make these changes, we had to make some very serious uh, bets on technology. VMware, we're familiar with VMware. Everybody uses it, it's a solid company. Um, prior to my work at, at Bay State, I worked in other, as a CTO and, and other relationships in other hospitals. Uh, and VMware, once again over there, uh, was, was well known. So we knew that vSAN had potential. We also knew, to your point, it was a new product. So when we started this project, we didn't have, we didn't plan to migrate any of our very significant loads to it until the product progressed in its life cycle. We were intimately uh, in communication with VMware about what their plans for and when those features would come on, and we mapped our project to that. So you talked about results. Uh, yes. Get into this a little more specifically, sure. but the before and the after. What are your metrics, your key metrics, sure. and how much did you improve on Sure. Them? Well, I guess one of the simplest things and most obvious is just cost of storage. Um, when we look at the true cost of storage in our old model, which are the big SANs, the fiber channel arrays, all the special people to do that, all the special software, and what we have now, combined everything really under vSAN, um, our storage costs are about uh, 30 to 50% less on any unit measurement, like uh, uh, on an IOP basis, on a, on a capacity basis, and so on. Um, another enormous benefit was that we had, like a lot of hospitals, silos. We had the little storage guys here, the networking guys here, the compute guys there. Each one of those groups was understaffed, highly stressed. When we put in a hyper-converged platform, vSAN and NSX really being the glue of it, they all started to learn each other's roles. So the net result was we had a larger pool of people to learn communal skills, on-call pagers weren't needed as much, we have a larger pool of people to handle things. In addition, as they got better and better at it, they slimmed the need uh, of like real-time attention. Uh, they could kind of work on other projects. So we had a backlog of many other things that the IT department simply couldn't get to because of keeping lights on. This technology allows me to not only have everything cost less, but I can deploy my resources outside of just keeping the lights on, which so is a big benefit. There's like an automation efficiency then all absolutely. of a sudden. You're, you're absolutely. offloading people from having absolutely. their eyes up here and they can be up here and doing absolutely. other things. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, can, can you walk us through some of those operational issues? There, there's kind of an inherent fear sometimes if, yes. you know, I am own this domain, this guy hands over the here, I have our swim lanes, we understand the back and Absolutely. forth, you put us all in a pool, it might be easier to kind of cut. Sounds like everybody's got more than enough work to keep them busy, so okay, sure. help, help walk through sure. some of those dimensions. Sure. Well, first of all, I want to step back and say that when we propose this, your point, the fear right up front, uh, it's natural for people to say, oh my God, this is a technology that could I could be replaced, you know, uh, if I don't measure up, I'll be out. That just didn't happen. Most people really want to learn. The problem is they don't have an option. There's no, there's no space within the organization's daily operations for which to learn something new. So after initial fear and kind of, trust me, you know, you're not going to get thrown out of here, um, and they began to see the interaction. They were involved with VMware at an engineering level. We brought VMware teams in along with um, my company. As I said, I'm a contract employee. Um, and we created a training regimen where we pushed the storage, the networking, the PC guys all into the same group. They, they worked through the actual design itself. We didn't, and VMware didn't just simply present the design, it was a requirement that our staff actually be part of the design process, so they learned this thing. Once that, once that began, no fear, everybody jumped in. All right, so Mike, you've lived through a lot of the maturity the last two years. Can you tell us, you know, what was it that was in the product when you said, okay, it can go in production, and what things are you still asking VMware for to kind of, you know, bring it even sure. further? Sure, um, The The initial, one of the things we always wanted was the ability to put uh, outside elements into the vSAN environment for storage. Out, uh, so compute nodes that are completely outside the infrastructure need to be able to see the storage. That's something that we know is coming. Um, 
once vSAN was uh, deployable in a three node architecture, and that's what we are, we are three separate, uh, almost exact copies with uh, dark fiber between them, so we can lose almost any conceivable combination of systems and still stay up. We needed that capability. VMware worked uh, directly with us to give us essentially a pass as soon as their products were able to do it, even if it wasn't generally stated, we were willing to, to do that, so that was number one. Number two, uh, your, your question about what we want them to do, uh, a couple of things. Um, their all-flash uh, system represents uh, right now some pricing elements. We're, we're looking for, uh, we have a lot of customers on vSAN that have spinning disk and flash, and to take advantage of some of the new things like erasure coding, certain compression, they, this all-flash issue represents a potential capital increase. That's something that we need to work out with VMware, and VMware is aware of it. Um, uh, one of the issues is encryption. Um, we're expecting encryption to be uh, available. That's something we know that VM is working on. Basically, most of our designs are in there and our requests are in their uh, life cycle. So we're, we're confident they're going to get to it. Are there areas, and I, 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 this is almost a loaded question, it's inherent in your business that there are areas that you need to be super sensitive about. We talk about imaging, for example. Sure. So what are those that create for you, you think, distinctively uh, interesting challenges than others in your position? Well, uh, imaging, to us imaging means growth. Uh, the, real issue, the real issue of imaging and uh, related parts of it is the fact that it's an explosive growth in the, growth in the, qu in the quantity of storage. Um, hospitals like Bay State um, are constantly exploring new forms of uh, what we call modalities, x-ray machines, things like that. And these devices have ever more complex requirements. We really can't easily predict where storage goes. So I need a method where I have linear costs to storage. Right now in like the traditional model with let's say VM, uh, EMC stuff, I have a, a case, certain number of drives in a case, and I go to number case two, then I have to add an engine and so on, and there's this stair step cost, I reach some maximum number, and then I have to do the whole thing all over again. What makes vSAN essential to us, and it is a major issue uh, in, in capacity, is that that's a linear uh, curve. I simply buy more simple nodes. I keep throwing node after node after node into the system. It allows me to, if not predict where my storage is going in terms of quantity, I know where my costs will go because I can, I can manage that. So, so that's, uh, that's what keeps me up. That's from, a, from this particular product's point of view. The security is another issue, which as I said, we know that uh, VMware will be introducing. All right, so Mike, with the benefit of hindsight, if you talking to your peers, what would you tell them kind of about virtual, virtual SAN in general, hyper-converged, uh, you know, o overall, um, you know, that, that, that they might learn from what you've gone through? Well, it's definitely worth it. It's a little scary. Um, uh, I think time's on my side, though. I mean, vendors like VMware, <laughs> Cisco, all of them are pushing towards this direction. What I would say, though, is be very, very careful um, about how you deploy in testing. What we found is hyperconvergence requires so many intricate parts working together that as versions change, as VMware makes a new version of vSAN and Cisco makes a new version of a, for example, a Cisco shop, of a UCS product, and then NSX has another version, these versions need to be tested very, very, very carefully. If you don't, you could have very, you got unintended consequences. One of the, not weak points, but one of the um, results of a highly compressed, hyperconverged architecture is that an error goes everywhere all at once. It's not isolated to a corner somewhere. Right. So you would better test carefully. Teaching people to properly test, uh, model things is essential. I would argue that, that if you're not willing to do that, be careful. Well, sage advice from a man who has been there and done that and is doing that uh, in healthcare. Sure. Mike Field, thanks for being with us. My pleasure, guys. The Cube continues here from VMworld in just a moment.